<laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, welcome to worship this morning. Uh, we begin our season of Lent. And uh, during this season, you may notice a little bit of a difference in the confession and forgiveness. Um, traditionally, during the Lent season, it's a time of confession. And so from Ash Wednesday to Monday Thursday, we are in a confessional mood. Uh, so the absolution is actually not given until Monday Thursday. And so even, our, even my part, once you've confessed, will be confessional in nature. So let us begin with a brief order of confession and forgiveness. In the words of the Reformation hymn, let us confess our sin before God. Out of the depths I cry to you. O Lord God, hear me calling. Incline your ear to my distress in spite of my rebelling. Do not regard my sinful deeds. Send me the grace my spirit needs. Without it, I am nothing. Amen. In God alone, in God we hope, and not in our own merit. We hope as Israel in the Lord, who sends redemption through the word. Praise God for grace and mercy. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. And please share that peace. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. 
Lord be with you. And also with you. Holy God, Heavenly Father, in the waters of the flood you saved the chosen, and in the wilderness of temptation you protected your Son from sin. Renew us in the gift of baptism. May your holy angels be with us, that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. First lesson is from Genesis chapter 9. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as come out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth, and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every liver creature of all flesh. And the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The word of the Lord.
reading from 1 Peter. Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey. When God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water, and baptism, which is which this prefigured now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, Lord. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, may be seated, and I invite the children to come forward. Hello. Hi. Okay, so I'm going to start with a kind of pretend thing. Let's pretend that you and some friends are planning a surprise birthday party for another friend, and we'll call her Dakota, okay? And so you promise not to tell Dakota about her surprise birthday party. But when Dakota shows up and is telling you, hey, my birthday's tomorrow. Do you know what people are doing for my birthday? I really want to know. What would you do? Would you tell Dakota about the surprise birthday party or would you keep your promise and keep the secret? Keep the secret? Yeah? Don't know? Yeah? Why would you keep the secret? Yeah, it's a surprise. Yeah. Well, in today's scripture story, there was no secret that was being kept, but Jesus does pay atten- uh, uh, make a promise that he'll pay attention to God. And after um, the baptism part in the story where God, uh, Jesus tells God, you know, I promise to make you the center of my life. I will make this promise happen and I'm paying attention to you all the time. He's then thrown into the situation of temptation. And that's kind of like when Dakota is showing up and asking, do you know what's going to happen on my birthday? We're tempted to maybe tell her what's happening. Um, But 
that would mean breaking our promise that we were going to keep it secret. So uh, Jesus, when he's tempted, he keeps his promise that he'll pay attention to God. And so uh, we learn from that example that we too can pay attention to God and we can just keep that promise um, even when it's tempting maybe not to. Um, just like keeping the promise to have the surprise for Dakota uh, and her birthday. It makes it more fun if we keep the promise. And so, let's pray. Okay, repeat after me prayer. Dear God, Dear God thank, you for Jesus, thank you for Jesus, who kept his promise, who kept his promise to, pay to, to pay attention to you, and then showed us, how to do the same. How to do the same. Thank you and amen. Thank you and amen. All right. Have a seat. There are four Gospels, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And each of these books present a very different portrait of Jesus. They have distinct confessions of faith and good news. They were written for very different communities who were listening to them. These audiences had particular uh, situations they were dealing with, setbacks, concerns. And these Gospels, even though they were written for those specific audiences, still apply today because even though times have changed, people haven't. The Gospel of Mark is probably the first Gospel that was written it seems to keep the story simple. When you read it, there's not a lot of details, not a lot of adjectives, not a lot of adverbs. And it's filled with urgency. You'll see the word immediately, 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 again and again and again in the book of Mark. There is this urgency as Jesus is launched into his ministry and his mission. The baptism of Jesus is a pinnacle moment in his ministry, and he only stays there for a very brief time before the Spirit of God drives him and pushes him into a time of testing and temptation in the wilderness. This text is read the first Sunday of Lent, often because it speaks of the 40 days in wilderness, and Lent is a 40-day uh, experience. And hopefully your 40 days of Lent will be an opportunity for prayer and reflection. And so to help with that, as we are uh, having readings from the Gospel of Mark throughout this year, I want to dig a little deeper into the meaning of the cross for Mark in his Gospel. The passion narrative, and that's what the story about the cross is called, it's a very important part of Mark's short story narrative. The passion makes up one-third of Mark's gospel, and it consists of five scenes. First, the disciples and Jesus share the Last Supper, instituting what we call communion. Second, praying in the Garden of Gethsemane where Jesus is captured. Third, the questioning by religious authorities and Peter's denial. Fourth, the Romans questioning by Pontius Pilate. And fifth, he is crucified, died, and buried. So who is this Jesus in the book of Mark? Jesus is described as being filled with fear and, 
agitation, anxiety, utterly frozen with panic and pain while he prays in the Garden of Gethsemane. Do you remember or recognize that that kind of famous painting? It was maybe in your grandma's house or in a lot of church basements. The one of Jesus praying by the rock in deep contemplation in this calm and soulful, holy manner. There it is. (laughs) Yeah, that's not Mark's Jesus at all. Not even, no. So why not? Why not this calm, stoic, superhero-like image? Why not this one who comes to save the day? Because that isn't the story that we need to hear when we're experiencing serious challenges, when we're struggling and have hardships. It isn't good news when we're being persecuted or beaten down or exhausted and worn out by daily concerns and grief and sorrow. It isn't good news when you're in the throes of it. The community of Christians that Mark is writing to were experiencing very serious challenges. Many had gotten caught up in the Jewish-Roman war, which ended by destroying the Jerusalem temple. Many had endured persecution, thrown to lions and such, and these people were brokenhearted. It was a community that is struggling to simply exist, perhaps suffering, Some of them may well have denied their faith under threat of persecution or even lost their faith altogether. And some folks wanted to come back to the faith and come back to the community who had left and feared not being welcomed. The Gospel of Mark is a story to read when you're feeling Depressed, isolated, anxious, shame-filled, defeated, lost. The big purpose of Mark is to tell the story of the cross and support Christians by letting us know that Jesus also suffered and understands what we're going through. The disciples fell asleep, even though Jesus warned them and and scolded them and told them not to do it. They fell asleep. And then it says they all abandoned him. They all left him. And Judas, his friend, betrays him. And later Peter, he tries to remain faithful and he follows the soldiers to the military compound. But then, in fear of recognition, He denies Jesus three times. Peter the rock on which I will build my church crumbles. Mark lets us know even Christians who become afraid and aren't dependable and deny their faith can still be disciples of Jesus and followers. After Jesus' crucifixion, the women were all who remained They had stayed until the bitter end. And in this time, women were not considered to be, to have full human rights. Women and children were the property of their fathers and husbands. And that's why the Bible speaks repeatedly about the care for the widow and the orphan, because these were the poorest of the poor. These were the ones with no rights no recognized humanity. And then Mark says that the curtain rips in two when Jesus breathes his last breath. That curtain is found in the temple separating the main sanctuary from a space called the Holy of Holies. This is where a priest would go to pray after a purification uh, rite and a cleansing And they would go into this Holy of Holies one time a year to be in the presence of God. So the ripping of that curtain meant nothing more ever separated us from God. That God was let loose on the world. 
in this cross. Well, it wasn't a beloved icon that people painted or wore or hung in their homes or tattooed on their bodies to demonstrate Christian affiliation. The cross, in Mark's time and Mark's writing, even for Christians at that time, was still primarily an instrument of execution used by the Romans for punishing lower class criminals. Crosses meant a very slow death by asphyxiation. And all the while, the body of the criminal would be on full display as a warning. It would be a warning for any would-be criminal, this could be you. And the story of Jesus and of God coming on a cross had a shock value that we've lost today. That God came in a dead man walking. And when you read the Gospel of Mark, you learn that God always shows up in the most unusual and unexpected places. That the disciples were made up of people who felt low and down and out and never really got it. We learn you don't have to be perfect or a powerful Christian to meet God, that God actually comes and meets you where you are in the middle of suffering and fear and pain, that God can identify with us now in those experiences. And if you're looking for a superhero God, you will be very disappointed when reading Mark. God comes to be with us, to hold us through our suffering, to stay with us even through death and new life. And then there is the women. The women who stuck by Jesus to the bitter end. You can't read the book of Mark without dealing with its shocking ending. You see, even the steadfast and faithful women abandon Jesus in the end. This ending... The way the book of Mark ends, it freaks people out for two main reasons. One, Jesus doesn't show up in the end. He's gone, and we don't see him. And two, the women totally fail him also. The last of the last fail him. They run away. They don't tell anyone because of fear and terror which overwhelms even the most faithful. No one is a hero in the end of the book of Mark. And that's really hard for us to deal with, which is probably why writers later added two endings, a short and a long, just to give it a happy fairy tale. But Mark didn't leave it that way. Mark's point is that no one followed through and stayed with Jesus. That we all fail to be good Christians at some point in this journey. Yet there is one more person in this story. One more person who followed Jesus, who stood by the cross, who kept with him to the nitty-gritty end, and who heard the good news that he had risen and shared it. And you want to know who that person is? You. You, the listener, are the faithful person. Because everyone failed in this story, yet it is still being told today. That is the miracle. Everyone failed, yet it is still being told today. Mark's good news is we have another chance. We have another chance to go and to tell and to share the story of God, that we are redeemed. Mark offers the most human account of Jesus in the Gospels. 
one we can identify with and that inspires us. And God comes to meet us not in our strength and power, but right in the middle of our suffering and our lostness and abandonment and denial. That nothing separates us from God who wants us to go and tell others. Thanks be to God. Amen. Renewed in the promises of baptism, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We pray for the church, for all who preach, teach, and inspire your people to lives of service. Renew your church in ministry, mission, and compassion. Unite us in faith and uphold us in the promises of baptism. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the world, for the well-being of both our own surroundings and of distant places, for favorable weather and sustaining rains, for creatures awakening from hibernation or beginning seasonal migrations. Provide safe habits and abundant food for all. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the nations, for all who govern or hold positions of authority, for those who work to make their communities safe from violence, protect all who place themselves in danger to save others from harm. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those in need, for those moving to new communities, for individuals who are incarcerated or recently released from prison for those who are abused or neglected, for the lonely and for those who are ill, especially Larry Stillwell, Morris James, Vera Kimsey, Hal and Jean Christensen, Bill Stoner, Greg McKinley, and Valerie Brown. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for this assembly, for musicians, artists, and poets who help us envision your love through word, image, and song. For those who have faced exclusion or felt forgotten, for all who reach out in love and welcome, Lord, in your mercy. 
With thanksgiving, we remember those who have died, especially Martin Luther and uh, Ron Fells, as they receive the fulfillment of your promises made to them in baptism. Sustain us in the hope of resurrection life with you, Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we also lift up all those of the Florida shoot school shooting. We pray for wisdom for our leaders as they discern the response to an ongoing crisis. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Trusting in your covenant of mercy, O God, we lift our prayers to you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We'll now have offering. Please be seated. Merciful God, we receive the sacrifice of our praise and thanksgiving and the offering of our lives that following in the way of the cross we may know the joy of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you.
holy God, our living water and our merciful God, together the rivers and seas, wells and springs, we bless and magnify you. You led your people Israel through the desert and provided them water from the rock. We praise you for Christ, our rock and our water, who joined us in our desert, pouring out his life for the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to all to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it to all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant of my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remember, therefore, his life, death, and resurrection. We await your salvation for all this thirsty world. Pour out your spirit on the holy food, and on all the baptized gather for this feast. Wash away our sin, that we may be revived for our journey by love of Christ. Through him all glory and honor is yours. Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, in heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Return to God with all your heart. Receive bread for the journey. Drink for the desert. You may be seated. We will commune along the railings. You may kneel or stand as you are able. You'll receive the bread and then dark liquid, which is wine, or light liquid, which is grape juice. And there are gluten-free elements available. Just let your server know. Come, let us eat.
invite you to stand and receive the blessing, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you always in his grace. Amen. Amen. Passionate God, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Sustain us in our Lenten pilgrimage, that our fasting be hunger for justice, our alms a making of peace, and our prayer the song of grateful hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated for announcements. Turn your attention to the messenger and invite you to read through this, and that'll have uh, some upcoming events and information. One thing is the memorial service this Thursday at 10.30 a.m., February 22nd, for Ron Fells, and that will be coming up. We have Lenten midweek worship services beginning this week at noon and 7 o'clock. The noon worship will be uh, Taize prayer worship, and the... 7 o'clock service is a Holden evening prayer worship, and there are soup suppers starting from 5 to 6.30 on the evening, so I'll let, I have two announcements, so go ahead. Whoever wants to go first. <laughs> okay. I just, this is our, um, we're finalizing the mission to Appalachia this coming summer, and if some of you have not signed up and are interested, please get a hold of me as soon as you can. There will be possible to, possibilities to sign up later, but we are trying to finalize the date. We have two dates we're working for, so I just want to let you know, and please get a hold of me if you would. Thanks. As uh, you may know, I sing with the Springfield Mid-America Singers, and there's yet another concert coming up. Here on February 25th, it's at Redeemer Lutheran Church, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and it's free. The unique thing about this particular concert is that this is actually the celebration of the 50th anniversary of our group, and the original founder of the group will be there. He comes from Pennsylvania, somewhere in the neighborhood, maybe Ohio, uh, and he's going to direct some of the original pieces that were sung. Uh, there's also an invitation from anybody who maybe was a member of that singing group to come sing with us. So next, is it next Sunday? Yeah, 25th at 3 o'clock at Redeemer, free. Thanks. One more uh if you've ever grumbled that you can't get a hold of anybody and you don't know who a member of the church is, Messiah has answered those grumbles like God answered the grumbling Israelites. We have 2018 directors on, directories on the table back there. Please pick one up and, uh, and you will have an answer to your grumbles. I invite you to please stand and receive the benediction. May God, who has called us forth from the dust of the earth and claimed us as children of the light, strengthen you on your journey into life renewed. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Guided by the gospel, we welcome all to worship, make disciples, hunger for ministry, nurture youth, gather resources for grand ministries, offer healing and care to all need. Marked with the cross of Christ, go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. 